small. Ow! Already bleeding. This little fish just bit me. This is the Carbon X 4000. This is my first time using this reel. Oh, what is that? That's a good looking fish. I don't have a net. It is a beautiful day to do some engine upgrades. You heard that right. I am getting my engine upgraded, which means all sorts of things. Where do I start? Exhibit A, my old trailer axle. Did some serious work on my trailer. Two new axles, new wheels, new leaf springs, new wheel hubs, new bolts. She's looking pretty. Look how shiny that is. Damn, that is a brand new trailer, pretty much. The game plan is, I'm gonna take my electric bike, put it on the boat, I'm gonna drive my boat to a boat ramp, take my bike back to my house, jump in the, the Range Rover with the trailer, pull my boat out of the water, and then we're gonna drive to Hialeah, which is about an hour and a half of a drive. Fingers crossed the Range Rover doesn't overheat on that drive. And that's it. Then we're gonna get the engine upgraded and then we're back in business. Time to make some more fishing videos. I'd like to add that I did all the trailer work myself, which is why I'm covered in scars. My hands are bloody. My fingernails are bruised. But as they say, beauty hurts. I just pulled the trailer out of here. The car is ready to go. Everything looks good. To be completely honest, it feels a little weird bringing my bicycle to my boat. Haven't done that before. Try not to drop it in the water here. My bike is in the back of my boat. Who would have thought? Turn the battery on, lower the motor. Everything is going smooth so far. You know what I'm forgetting? I'm forgetting a wrench to take my drain plug out. See, I knew I was forgetting something. Hey, Elliot. How you doing? Where are you going? Come back here, love me. There's the ranch. The ranch. The wrench, not the ranch. All right, let's turn this bad boy on. She still turns on perfectly after months of sitting. Give her a little push. Yeah. Oh God, bike almost fell over. Whew. We're on the road, boys. So you're probably wondering, what is wrong with the boat? It looks to be driving perfect. The steering isn't like super smooth because there's an internal steering module inside of that engine, which um, went bad. And apparently what Evinrude did was they are now upgrading them with a newer steering module that apparently should never break. So I'm going to have that put on all under warranty. Heck yeah. And we should have a super awesome engine back in business. By the way, uh, a little tip, bring some cash with you on these kind of ventures in case you get yourself in some trouble and need to pay a cop off. Man, I was, I wish I was fishing today. What a beautiful day. Not gonna lie, she's actually running pretty good. Woo, that was a big ass boat. God damn. Beautiful, perfect landing if I don't say so myself. All right, boat is tied off. <laughs> Very good. Now I just gotta get my bicycle off of here. How the hell am I gonna do this? Maybe I can carry it. Oh my god, that is a heavy bike. That is a heavy bike. Okay. How do I get myself in these situations all the time? I still haven't figured that one out. I'm gonna leave you alone, baby. I'm gonna go get the car. Don't float away, don't sink, don't catch on fire. See you in a little bit. Oh shit. We're officially here. Got my America pants on because America. I would be lying if I said I wasn't slightly nervous. Sounds good so far. Sounds amazing actually, not even a creak. You'd almost think that it had brand new springs and bolts and axles and wheel hubs and wheels. <laughs> $2,000 later, I basically got a brand new trailer. Yeah. Hello. Good. Pulling a boat out of the water. Okay, 
There you go. Do you know if the uh, the water is running? Hey, how are you doing? Ranger Mary. Yeah, I, it's been a while since I've Something seen you. Interesting name. Heiko. How do you say it? Heiko. Heiko. Nice yeah. to meet you again. You too. <laughs> I know Craig. You know Craig from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to live there. Yep. Good old yeah, Craig. My name David. You probably met him too. Mm hmm. So what are you up to today? You had a question. I'm pulling my boat out of the water. Oh yeah, is the is there any freshwater washdowns running? No. They're all they're all down. Yeah. Well, we're not allowed to have washdown. We're a clean marina. Oh okay. And the state doesn't want to pay for all the jet skis and the boats. Okay. Yeah. We usually send people to the gas station at the second traffic light. Okay. Um, so the Circle K, the Shell. Yeah. They have like a drive-in. You turn the water on, power hose, wash it off. Okay, cool. All right, man. Nice to see Thank you. Nice you. To talk you with too. You. Good luck with the boat. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Have a good one. I don't know if you guys heard that, but this, the freshwater wash, they don't have a wash down. And I don't want to get my brand new. I, I just fixed my trailer. The last thing I'm going to do is get it salty and leave it salty. So I'm going to try to steal some water. Okay, maybe steal is the wrong word. Okay, that's a little harsh, but I'm gonna try to take some water from the dive boats and splash down my uh, trailer wheels with it after I pull the boat out. <laughs> that's the water I'm gonna try to steal. Drop it in, got a bit of a high tide, so I might get my car salty, shoot. Okay, I'm taking my shoes off as a precaution. I gotta say, that was super smooth. All right, baby. Pull her out, pull her out, pull her out. Oh, she did it. Oh, Lord have mercy. Whew, she came out. See, now I gotta get the salt off of there. The water hose doesn't work. Shoot. No, my brand new trailer is gonna rust. No. I don't know if this is gonna do much with salt water already on it, but I'm trying to take care of my things from now on. All right, I think it's secured. We are driving to OBR Marine. OBR Marine is one hour, 20 minutes away, 63 miles. This is the furthest I've driven the boat on the trailer in probably two years. I am a little nervous. I know that probably half of you right now are hoping that I'm going to break down during this drive. Something miserable is going to happen to me because that makes for great content. But I right now am praying that we just get there in one piece and this all goes smooth. Okay, so far so good. It's not making too many noises. That's a good thing. Well, I'll keep you updated on the drive if anything goes awry. We're on the blue wall leaving the keys and we're doing like a solid 50, 55 miles an hour and so far all is gravy, but there are potholes once in a while and sometimes I hit them and every time I clench my butt cheeks pretty tight but so far everything has been going smooth. We're about 15 minutes into the ride already. Here we are at OBR Marina in Hialeah. Destination reach. Can't tell you how freaking stoked I am. I'm gonna see if they got a hose to borrow so I can wash down my trailer. And I'm gonna drop my boat off here and that's it. We'll see how long it takes them to fix it, but uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm super excited or super worried, but I'm I think I'm more excited than anything. I'm going back to Hialeah right now to pick up my boat. She's ready. She's working good. They sea trialed her. Everything is top notch, ready to go. And I was just thinking, when was the last time I went offshore? on like a solo offshore trip, just fishing offshore by myself. I don't remember, but as soon as I get this boat back, we're gonna go so hard, boys. Once again, big shout out to OBR Marine. The boys over there, Junior, has been helping me out a lot. They sea trialed it. They really went above and beyond to help me out. Highly suggest uh, hitting them up. If you're in the Miami area, 
hit them up if you got any boat problems. They're one of the few people that have really been able to just get everything done for me and do it exactly the way that they said they were gonna do it. But before I get too excited, we're gonna go pick up the boat now and then we'll see what the damage report is because I'm not sure how much is gonna cost me yet. So <laughs> we'll see how happy I am. All right, let's go check the boat out. Here we go, OBR Marine, baby. I'll just pull up right up here. I'm gonna go inside, talk to them, see what the damage report is, hook the boat up, make my way back to the Keys, and then I'll give you an update how things went. You see the smile on my face right now? Come check, come look, come look, come look. Before we leave, I just wanna show you the boat real quick. Man, they really outdid themselves. They even cleaned it for me. Did you see how sparkling white that thing is? They cleaned it for me. I am super, super excited right now. Do y'all wanna know how much I paid? All right, before I tell you how much I paid, let's just get this show on the road because I'm a little behind schedule, so I'm gonna start driving. And now I think it's time to tell you guys the painful hit my wallet just took. So they replaced the DPR sensor. There's a motor inside of the engine that controls the steering. And there's a module, like a little computer called the DPR that controls that. And that's the part that went bad. So they replaced that part. They ran a diagnostics on the engine. They even put it in the water and they did a sea trial on it. They made sure that everything was running smooth. They also just checked everything on the engine, gave it like basically a full service, but they didn't uh, replace any of the spark plugs or filters or anything because I just had a service done like 20 hours ago. And they cleaned my boat. They just made sure everything was running perfect. And what did they charge me? Y'all ready for this? Zero dollars, baby. They told me it was all under Evinrude warranty. I call this the Blue Bridge. And there's Gilbert's right there. Nice restaurant on the water. Uh, there's also some good bait spots right there. The Pilchards like to stack up over there. Wow, my boat is so clean. I think we're good. Put the drain plug in and let's go. All right, this is where you gotta be careful. When you're putting the drain plug in, this is where the boat, <laughs> you just gotta be ready to jump out of the way in case, you know, you never know. All right, drain plug is in. I think we're ready to drop her on in. My engine has a thingy on it. Yeah, I gotta trim my engine up. See, my engine had this little locking mechanism that was in the upright position. If I would have left it like that, I wouldn't have been able to trim my engine down. Now I would have looked like a real fool. All right. Got the butt end of the boat in the water. Now what I'm going to do is loosen this part. All right. The boat is detached from the trailer. I don't have enough rope for this shit. All right, let's drive this boat home and come pick her up in a little bit. I'm so stoked right now. I'm so happy right now. Me so happy. Me so happy. Wow. She is running so smooth. The steering is mega smooth. I can steer this boat with one finger. All right. Let's give it a little thump and see how she handles. Woo. I'm freaking out. I am freaking out right now. I am so happy to have my boat back. Like, you have no idea how happy I am right now. What the hell? <clears throat> Let's just cut all that out. <laughs> home sweet home. Turn her on off. Peace and quiet. 
We are back in action. Who's looking forward to some offshore fishing, some patchery fishing? Let's go. I gotta go ride my bike back to John Penny Camp and get my car, but the boat's back. Well, I went from being the happiest boy in the world to my engine turning off yesterday, so we got some work to do. Elliot, <laughs> what are you doing pouncing around in the bush? Oh, rolling around. Oh. That's why you're so dirty. There we go. So a couple of months before the steering issue, my boat had an issue, or has an issue, but I'm gonna try to recreate this issue while I explain what the issue is. Lower the motor. So if you run the boat pretty hard for like 10, 15 minutes, and then you idle around, for some reason, it if you're idling at like 800 RPM, it'll go up to like 900 and then up to a thousand and it'll run real rough like it'll kind of be shaking a lot like boop, 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 boop. and then if you take it out of idle and put it into neutral it'll just turn off and once it's turned off it's really hard to start like i'll have to hold the key for like 30 seconds to a minute just before it actually turns back on which is not ideal especially when there's a lot of wind i almost got blown onto that grass flat yesterday that would have been embarrassing Everyone sees the South Floor Fishing Channel boat stuck on the grass flat. Embarrassing. Gotta avoid that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the engine on, I'm gonna run it in idle, hooked up to the dock, and hopefully we can recreate the issue. Let's see if it turns on real smooth. All right, turned on just fine. I run into the issues when I'm idling at like 800 RPM. So I'm gonna increase the RPM a little bit. I hope my dock holds. 650, 700. No, oh, I gotta go a little higher than that. 750, 800, there we go. All right, we're at 800 RPM. 860, so it's like slowly climbing higher. Now it's back to 8.30. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. It just gave a little more punch. Okay, it like jumped up to eight. Oh, 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 970. It just went to 970. It's holding 870. All right, it's happening again. Now when you're like just idling along like a, a canal like this and there's boaters and kayakers around you, it's kind of scary when your boat goes from 800 to like a thousand RPM without you touching anything. It's like, whoa. 960. Oh, oh, 1200, 1200. Did you see that? Bam, that's what I'm talking about right there. What the heck? Now it's back to 970. All right, now if I put it in neutral, let's see if it stays on. See, normally, now if I, when it jolts up like that, and I'm like, oh shit, because my boat starts to go faster when I, you know, when I'm not doing anything. So I'll put it into neutral, or I'll take the some throttle out, just a tiny bit back into like idle throttle, and the engine just shuts off. But it's not doing that now, but that's usually what happens. And that's what'll happen if I take it out right now. You know, it almost feels like it only happens for like four or five seconds. Maybe I should just ride through it. Like when it happens, don't take the throttle out, let it do its thing, and then let it keep going again. Maybe that's what I'll do. We'll take her for a real spin when some of this wind dies down. Try turning it on again. Yeah, it turns on right away. Huh. I think it's holding pretty good. Well, so far it's running pretty good. You know, it's always when you try to recreate a problem, it just, oh, there it goes. Did you see what just happened? We just went from 800 RPM up to 1000 RPM. Now we're at 900 RPM. Now we're back to 840. It's still running a little high, 850. Oh my God, it almost knocked me off the chair when that happened. Holy smokes. We got ourselves a sunny day. It's the next day, still windy, but you know what? We're gonna put the engine to the test. What, what's the saying? If it's running rough, buff it out. <laughs> So we're gonna go to the sandbar today. I got a cooler full of good, delicious. Look what's up in here. We got some LaCroix. 
We got some oranges, some lemons, some grapes, lots of freaking meat. Yeah, buddy. Let's see if we run into any issues. Well, we got 48% fuel, which, oh, you know, I got a 115 gallon tank, 48, 49% fuel. We got like maybe 55 gallons up in here. That should be enough to get to the sandbar and back. I freaking, I hope so. Low temperature fault. What does that mean? Wait, should I go back to the dock for this? The heck is low temperature fault? My engine just did the thing. There it goes again. All right, see we're at, we're at like 750, 700, and it'll jump to like 800, 1,000. See, there it goes. You just try jumping. I will say we got a beautiful day. Look at that. Crystal clear water. Wow. Might take the John boat back here later and do some fishing. Did you see that? I perfectly maneuvered bef between those kayakers. I think I'm learning to tame the beast. She might have some RPM spikes, but you know what? Let's just say, hey, she's a two-stroke. Hey, she's a beautiful, okay? Sometimes you have to put up with a bush, but she's a beautiful lady. That's how I'm feeling right now. Damn, damn, I might've hit rock bottom, boys. Damn, I just missed that on video, but we just hit a 1400 RPM spike. That one was kind of crazy, I'm not gonna lie. But we about to take off, so I'm gonna take my hat off. Trim her down. Made it to the sandbar. Boom, baby. We're leaving the sandbar. Mission, trip, successful. We made it back. Look how beautiful it is out here. Damn, boys. Rode her hard. We're doing like 50 miles an hour the whole way, all the way to the Isla Marana sandbar and back. She done buffed out. Ever since I took the boat to the sandbar, it has been storming and raining. Two days ago, we had like 30 knots of wind. Yesterday was like 20. My John boat almost sank a couple times filling up with water. But today, y'all see that blue skies? Oh, uh, there's some clouds back there and it's still pretty windy. The Elliot down there, you see, he wants some fish. So you know what we're gonna do today? Holy smokes, do y'all see that plane? Right there? military. I live pretty close to the Homestead Air Force Base, which is like right over there. And they had a, they had an air show like a week ago. And there is like fighter jets flying over my house. There's the Thunderbolts or the ACOGs or whatever they're called. Like all this military equipment was flying over my house. My whole house was shaking. I, and I was just like, boys, the war has begun. <laughs> it was like time to bunker up, but turned out it was just an air show. So I just called the bait shops and they are all out of shrimp right now. But I'm gonna look in my chest freezer and see what kind of bait I have. Well, my bait supply is pretty low. All right, what do we got in here? We got a bag of really nasty looking Threadfin herring from an old John boat trip. A box of squid that is who knows how old. Oh. Oh, they're like all melted in there. Okay, so, uh, hmm. Well, the last thing I wanna do is get out there and not be able to catch a fish because I don't have the right bait. So let me think about this for a second and I'll get back to you. Oh, hey buddy. I was just staring at my rods and I'm like, what am I gonna use? And I have my inshore rod that I've been using in the last few videos. This is the Captain 2000 PC Fun Reel and I got it spooled up with 10 pound monofilament and I absolutely love this rod. So we're gonna use this rod and reel combo. But since we're going patch reef fishing, I would like something a little beefier because there could be big muttons out there. And that is where, no, this is the Carbon X 4000, a beautiful reel, got the big handle. Like this is probably, in my opinion, the perfect patch reef fishing reel. Now, the only problem is I only have 10 pound monofilament line. 
and I would really like to put at least 12 pound on here. And my next size up is this Andy line that I have. This is probably like 10 years old. No joke. I found this in the back corner of the backwoods alley. But it's, and it's 20 pound, so it's way thicker line than I would wanna use. But I was probably gonna throw it away. So I'm gonna spool it up on here and we'll use it and see if we like it. If we don't like it, I'll just end up changing the line out anyways. But we're gonna spool this reel up with 20 pound monofilament. Bop it. Boom, we got a reel, a beautiful, sexy reel, ready to go. I'm gonna slap it on this. This is just like a standard medium action rod. Uh, it's got a decent backbone. What does it say on here? It's a medium power, fast action, rated for lines 10 to 17 pounds, rated for lures 3 8 to 3 4 of an ounce. So that's perfect. That's right in our line range and we are good to go. Slap it on there. And we got two fishing poles ready to go. That's all we're gonna use. I don't even think I'm gonna use any leader for this because 20 pound is already a lot. We'll probably just tie a hook right on there and we're good to go. Oh, hey there, buddy. Look who decided to pay us a visit. Well, that took a little bit longer than I thought, but I got my cooler with some ice in it. I got the bucket with bait. I got the two fishing poles. I got all my camera gear, my hat. I got my the, uh, the new South Florida Fishing Channel fishing buff printed cut and sewn right here in america florida actually to be specific south florida fish channel.com get yourself some and that's that's all i got on the boat today oh yeah this is our sword glory flag if you like that looks pretty good let's see if the boat turns on should probably put the engine in the water first okay i got a low oil alarm but i think that's just because it was trimmed up we got 35% oil, that is plenty for today. And I do have, yes, I do have some spare oil. So we are good to go. Some good old XD fitty. She's a running. Okay, 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 okay. Main power fault error. Code 31, main power fault error. We'll see that. And I think I know what's causing that issue. I had a low battery in there. I think it's actually a dead battery. So I have a spare battery just in case. And we're on the way. We're underway. Oh, and it's pissing. So my bilge pump is working. Both my bilge pumps. Doesn't want to get up on plane. All right, so we're at like 500 RPM, right? Move it up. Doesn't want to go. It's like blah, 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 blah. You know, it's almost like a, a throttle. I think someone, Carson was telling me, throttle position sensor, the TPS maybe. Let's see, if I put it in neutral. Okay, now it's in neutral. I'm gonna wait like five seconds. Now I'm gonna put it in gear. Let's see if we, nope, still doesn't want to go. Why does it not want to go? I'll put it in reverse. It does not want to go in the... It does not want to go. Why doesn't it want to go? It doesn't want to go over like 1400 RPM for some reason. And it kind of like shakes a little bit. Like watch this. It's like bop, 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 bop. It doesn't like that, see? That's full throttle. That was full throttle right there. Okay. Damn, man. Sometimes what helps is if I turn the engine off and then turn it back on. I would just feel real stupid if we like drift into the mangroves here, but I'm gonna give it a try. So, neutral, turn it off. Yeah, it's so quiet and peaceful out here. All right, now we're gonna turn it on. Okay, she turned on just fine. Let's see if we can get on play now. Yeah, baby. feels good to be out here again boy do i tell you what all right i just put the boat in neutral so we're gonna do some patchery fishing land is right over there like maybe a mile i don't know it's pretty close you can see it and um the water's not that deep here it's like maybe 10 to 15 feet and what we're looking for is rocks okay so we're in uh 12 feet of water well i didn't see anything really 
There's a fish, but nothing that exciting around here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go in the tower. Oh, normally I have my cooler here that I step on to go into the tower. This is gonna be a little bit harder. There we go. Easy peasy. Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is much better up here because now if there's some corals or some rocks, I'll it'll be a lot easier to see them from up here. And if you know anybody that is a mechanic or knows Evan Roods or might know what's wrong with my engine, if you could send them this video and have them watch that part, that would be really cool of you. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a very big dark patch right there. And it goes from like, we're 15 feet deep right here, but it goes up to like eight feet right there. Cause there's a big pile of rocks or corals or something. So I'm gonna anchor here. And I think the wind is kind of blowing us that way. So the butt end of the boat should be facing the patch reef. And then we'll chuck some bait on there. That's a rusty chain right there. Oh man. All right, I don't have any zip ties for my anchor, but that's okay. That'll work for now. I'll fix it later. What bait do we use? Well, I got the 10 pound mono Captain 2000 reel rigged up. So with just a nice, nice old live bait hook. Same one I use in the back country. Oh man, this brings back some memories. Just having a bunch of squid and stuff gooping around the deck so i'll just toss a couple out kind of get the uh the scent in the water one more freebie for good luck and then i'll toss out a whole squid they're not very big but a whole squid right on the hook like kind of hide the hook in there a little bit there's a lot of seaweed out here right now what the heck do you guys see all that seaweed coming out of my boat? I'm about to be inside of that. It's coming my way. Oh, 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 I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. <laughs> I think I had a fish though. It was ripping line out. Ah, oh, it came off. What happened? Oh, I think something grabbed it. It's the attack of the abom abominable seaweed monster. Maybe there's a triple tail in here somewhere. Holy, I feel like I'm offshore right now, but I'm only in 15 feet of what this is crazy. Well, I guess while I wait for this massive seaweed patch to uh, float on by, I have a water, I got beach plum, LaCroix, limoncello, LaCroix, and watermelon. I also have this, oh, I also got two freaking beautiful eggs. Hmm. I want to eat an egg, but I'm gonna, if I catch a fish, I'm gonna celebrate with an egg. A new warrior ready for battle. Come on. Do me proud, squid. Swim right into their mouth. Right into their freaking mouth, buddy. Oh, I'm getting bit. I'm getting bit. Come on. Come on. Take it again. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, yes. No. Oh. Had a fish on. Maybe he'll come back for it. Give it a little slack again. I'm gonna tie a number two circle hook and that is going to go. Something's nibbling. This one's on the circle hook. Yes, we're on. Oh baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it feels good. This is the Carbon X 4000. This is my first time using this reel. Type the drag just to touch. So far I'm loving it. Oh, what is that? That's a good looking fish. Good looking fish. I don't have a net. Crap, I don't have a net. Oh, it's a grouper. Oh my God, it's a, holy smokes, it's a freaking grouper. Oh yeah. All right, they are out of, that's, no, that's a Jew fish. Hey, come here, buddy. Let me unhook you real quick. Perfect, hook it right in the side of the mouth. Absolutely beautiful, ate the piece of shrimp. Look how beautiful. That Jewfish is absolute wonder. We're gonna get him in the water real quick though, because oh, took off like a rocket. Hey, hey, hey. woo! 
Yo! That was cool. Honestly, if you know anything about grouper, a grouper like that big are extremely powerful. So that rod handled that guy like nothing. So now I'm confident we can pull some big snappers right off the patch race with this setup. Easy peasy. Not even the grouper could get me in the rocks. Let's go. Is that another nibble? Yes. Yep, fish on. Okay, not as big, but uh, still a fighter. Oh, a yellow tail snapper. How you doing there, buddy? Oh, that beautiful yellow tail snapper. Can you guess why they're called yellow tail? Give you one hint. Woo! What up? I'm just chilling. I just caught a nice uh, Goliath grouper. Yeah, and a couple of yellowtail, but they're small. Nice to meet you. All right, man. Good seeing you. Yeehaw! That'd be pretty sick. <laughs> Later, man. Well, that right there was dealsinthed.com that just stopped by. It's actually where I'm getting a new, uh, new toy from. But that's coming up in a future video. But get ready, because I got a big toy coming. Pulling up the anchor now. You know, the bite's not that hot on this patch. And what did I always say in the past? If they ain't biting, if you ain't catching fish, you gotta go to a different spot. And onwards we go to look for the promised lands. Gotta find that honey hole. That right there looks like a pretty nice patch if you ask me. I think I'm gonna fish this one. There's also another one over there, and I can see another one. Well, I could see like six of them over there. So we'll just keep trying these patches till we got one with some hungry fish. Yards back, by the time the anchor catches, we'll probably be like 40 yards from it, 30 yards, and we can just cast right to it. Eat it, buddy, old pal. Yes, yes, oh my God. Look at that rod bend, we are on, we are on. Oh, this is light action two, 10 pound test. Feels kind of like a snapper, I think. It's very got very snappy movements. And it is, look at that. Hey, that's, that's not a half bad yellow tail snapper. Whoa, very feisty, very feisty. You know that, that's just about a legal yellow tail snapper, but we're gonna let him go. Cause we looking for the big bull, oh! I swear, I give all my fish just smack their heads on the way out every time. Got another fish on. Oh, oh. you not get hooked? What happened? Oh, he's back at it. I'm gonna let him eat it for a little bit longer. Let some line go out. Come on, bud. Keep taking it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. And it's about to be game over for this pal. I think my squid came off that time too. Yup, it did, it did. Good thing I got my other rod ready to go with a whole squid this time. You know, if you got two rods, just keep them, keep them good to go at all times, baby. Chuck them on out there. Oh, f me. There goes my squid, came right off the hook. <laughs> See, I thought I was all professional and then I just screwed it all up. Damn it. Oh, fish on, fish on. That's right, baby. What do we got here? I think my other rod's on too. Yep. Uh, grunt. Sweet. Small one, so he's going to get let go, but look at that. We're patch fishing now. Look at the colors on his face. Beautiful. Oh, what happened here? Something just grabbed this guy and got... Oh, something grabbed this one and took it into a rock while I wasn't paying attention. Oh, oh, I might, I might get him out. I might get him out. Yes, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nice, nice yellow tail. Oh, this rod's on. This rod is on. This rod's on something nice. Oh, oh, what is that? Oh, okay, it's a yellow tail. It's another yellow tail. <laughs> all right awesome look at these bad boys two of them on the deck beautiful fish all right so they 
Got to be 12 inches to the fork. I mean, with a pinch tail, totally. Uh, he's probably not long enough. He might be 12 inches if I stretched him out, but. Another perfect hook in the bottom lip on this guy. Oh yeah, he's legal. Hmm. You know, pan seared hole, he'd be pretty good. <laughs> it's been a while since I had a whole yellowtail snapper. So yeah, I'm gonna dispatch him. It's SpongeBob and Squidward. And they're going out together as a team for once. Maybe like one more yellowtail would be perfect. It feels good. Once you have a fish in the boat, everything else like kind of starts becoming a bonus. So I'm like, I'm feeling good. I'm like, I got dinner already. I'm gonna, oh, I don't know how I wanna cook them, but I'm excited, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm pretty sure I have a fish, but it feels like very small. Oh my little thing. Look at you, you little, that's a little thing, hey. Look how small he is compared to the other one. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drive around. I'm not gonna anchor. And I'm just gonna drive right on top of the patches and cast on them. That way I can cover a lot of ground real fast. It's just kind of out back, drifting behind us. Maybe a fish will grab that. And then this one, like we got a patch roof right here. I'll just cast it right on top of it. Bunch of little fish. Ah, I got one. Oh, there's so many of them. What is that? Oh, baby yellowtail. There's hundreds of baby yellowtail right on top of this patch. Oh, hey, that, there's something. All right, we got to find some bigger fish. Okay, this patch reef has a lot of fish, but they're all very small. Ow! <laughs> Damn! See that already bleeding? He bit me. He just, this little fish just bit me. I see some mangrove snappers down there. Wait, 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 wait. Is that a blue runner? Whoa, this is a powerful, powerful fish right here. <laughs> he did not want to pose for a picture. Yeah, what do we got here? Haha! -ha. A grunt. Maybe he'll give us a grunt. There we go. Thanks for the grunt, buddy. Let you go on your way now. We have earned ourselves a treat. Since we caught a fish, I think it's time we get to eat our eggs. These are blue eggs too, which is really cool. That is a good looking egg. That is dessert right there. One more baby, one more. Bottoms up. <sighs> Woo, baby. Now that was a perfect freaking landing. Wow. I mean, that was flawless. I don't know if you guys remember this, but these mangroves, when I first moved here, almost three years ago now, they were only about this tall. Now they're like twice as tall as me. I don't know if I want to cut them or if I want to keep them tall. I mean, it's pretty cool how tall they are. It's like a forest. It is nice. I like it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Hey, buddy. How you doing? I got a yellowtail for us. I got a yellowtail for us, buddy. Come here. Come on. Come look at it. Elliot. He knows it's small. That's why he's not coming to look at it. Oh, he always knows. He's so smart. I just saw my cat. Wait. Hey. <laughs> hey, he's... Hey, buddy. Come here. You're just walking away from me. What do you think about that? Impressed? Or not, not that impressed? I have given it some thought and I'm just going to fillet, fillet this guy. If I had like two or three of them, I would probably cook them whole. But all right, let's try to do this as smooth as possible. Hey, buds. Watch, he's probably gonna start rolling around in that dirt even though 
It's not dry anymore, so he might not roll in it. Hey, buddy. Oh, hold on. Ho oh, ho. Hey, knife safety. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're gonna cut your little paws off. Jeez. Just outlining this fish. You wanna cut as close to the rib cage as possible. Run your knife along the ribs. It's kind of hard when a cat is rubbing on you, but he just wants the love. Hey, get your f face away from the knife, please, buddy. All right. <coughs> Look at that. Perfect. Absolutely no meat left. Now we're gonna run our knife along between the meat and the skin. And if possible, do not let your fish touch the fillet table. You wanna keep your fillet nice and clean, just like that. Boom, and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And then, I'm gonna figure out how we're gonna cook this bad boy. Elliot, are you just chewing on the skin? Oh my God, you're just chewing on the skin. There's not even any meat on there, buddy. And let me at least give you a good piece to chew on. Stop chewing on the skin. Gee, you're making horrible sounds over there. You're like, geez. There's a little bit of meat like right here on the fish, but all the rib bones are in there. So I don't really want to give it to the cat, but I want to give him something to chew on. Elliot, what are you doing? That can't be good. You can't, there's no way that's enjoyable. <laughs> here bud try this try that there's a little more meat on that stop 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 chewing on that here try this jesus oh you know what elliot also likes he loves the heart but the heart on this snapper is very small that's it elliot elliot no stop chewing on that here look at my finger there eat that yeah he loves the heart don't be eating my fillets now. Nice try, pal. We in the kitchen and we gonna live that good, good life. Don't take a knife to your beautiful pan. What are you doing? All right, we got the pan heating up. It's at a medium heat. First thing we're gonna do, is slap some butter on there. Mmm! This right here is that Amish butter. The Amish country butter. And then we're gonna take our number one selling spice the South Florida Fishing Channel Fishing Game Seasoning Blackening. This is a brand new bottle. Here's the Yellowtail Snapper that we filleted up. Two beautiful fillets. You know, they're not world record size fillets or anything, but they are beautiful and they're gonna be the best little snack that I've ever had. I'm gonna take our blackening season, seasoning and handsomely coat it. I don't think I've ever had blackened yellowtail snapper, now that I think about it. There. That's it. This is super simple. Hey, buds. How you doing? I did want to mention, I had an alarm go off on the ride back with Dan, but I didn't get it on video. But uh, I had an error code come on the, uh, the Evinrude little computer thing, and it said code 137 fuel delivery issue. And I looked it up and it says that there is a fuel restriction between the engine and the fuel tank. This error code has come up a couple times, but I, I don't know how a fuel restriction would cause a spike in RPM. And I would think that the engine would have a hard time running over 2000 RPM because anything over 2000 RPM, the engine runs great and smooth. It's just like an idle and stuff. So I don't know that error code came up but um, if anybody has an idea what might be going on with my engine let me know so i can order the part hopefully fix it myself i don't want to trailer my boat anywhere i just want to fish i just want to fish you know that that's it that's all i want to do just fish make content and be happy Ooh, mm, look at those little ooh, ooh. shake 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 senorita Shake, shake. All right, once uh, you can see it's pretty much cooked halfway through. The cooked fish kind of turns white. It's still a little raw up here on the top. So we're just gonna give them a quick flip and they'll be ready in maybe a minute. It's real quick. I mean, 
perfect. Turn the heat off. Uh, I'll just put it back on this plate so we don't waste the plate. Ooh, baby. Oh, it's flaky already trying to fall apart. Beautiful. I'm a happy camper. All right, let's just take, take, oh God, it's golden brown, blackened, perfect. This is exactly what you're looking for when it comes to a blackened, fresh piece of fish. Can't really beat that. Let's give it a try. Probably gonna be too hot, but. Woo! Mm, hot, hot, hot. Okay, maybe I gotta let it cool a little more. Maybe I'll uh, blow on it. All right, this time I'm gonna eat it for flavor, not for burning the roof of my mouth. Mmm, flaky, soft, amazing flavors. It's got a, like if you would imagine like a perfectly blackened fish and like a taco and what that might taste like, that's exactly what this tastes like. I'm starting to feel extremely guilty for not having given Elliot any. Elliot, it's covered in blackening. You're not gonna want that. I'm sorry, buddy. Well, girls and boys, we got the boat back and we got some amazing trips coming up. I'm excited to show you all of those things. We got some seriously cool trips planned. I got two new electric reels I can't wait to try out. So much going down here on the South Florida Fish Channel. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the very next episode. And also, don't forget to check out our sponsor, PCFun.com. You can get 15% off their already extremely affordable and high quality reels. Uh, if you use my code SFFC15, I'll link it right here. It's in the video description. Check them out. Thanks to my sponsors. Until next time, cheers.